Welcome back with another video of mine with the poem Jabberwocky written by Lewis Carroll. The full name of Lewis Carroll was Charles Littridge Dodson. He was a famous English writer besides being a mathematician and a photographer. He began creating stories and games as a child to entertain himself and his 10 siblings. He began writing at a very early age. Lewis Carroll is nowadays also read, enjoyed and appreciated mostly for his humorous poems which employ parody, unusual literary forms and fun. His large collections of words and stories have made him quite popular among children, adults and even critics alike. Let us have an introduction to this poem Jabber. It is regarded as one of the greatest literary pieces and if you read the poem you will see, it is also known as a nonsensical poem. Now this poem Jabberwocky, it appeared in the year 1871 in the novel Through the Looking Glass which was also a sequel to Alice's Adventures in Wonder. This poem is recording the story of the bravery of a young boy who faces an evil dragon-like creature and wins the battle. What are the themes which are embodied in this poem? Courage, love and good versus evil are the major themes of this poem. The poem revolves around the heroic victory of a boy who risked his life to kill Shabarwal. Although his father warns him about the evil creature, the boy gathers up courage just to eradicate or remove the evil from this world. Now, coming to the poem, let us read stanza by stanza and we'll have an explanation of it all. Jabberwocky poem It was brilliant and the slithy toe did guide and gimble in the bay. All mimsy were the borogos and the bomb rats are The poem begins with a description of the setting of the forest of the it was quite late afternoon, around we can say 4 p.m., when people start brawling things for dinner. And that is the exact meaning of the word brilliant. The boy goes on to mention the strange creatures like slimy toves. Okay, toves are just you can say fictional badger like creatures with horns like stags. And these toves, what did they do? They twirled, that is, they rotated, revolved in the marshy places that is waves. The strange creatures lie the desperate borogo. Now borogos are what? They are thin, shabby, looky like birds without wings. And the solemn rats. Rats are again fictional turtle-like creatures with a mouth like that of a shark. And all these creatures, they emitted strange sounds. So you can see a perfect setting is given here in the first stanza of the poem. Second stanza. Beware the jabberwock, my son, the jaws that bite, the claws that cut. Beware the jujube bird and shun the frumious bandits. So, in the second stanza, the father tells his son to beware, that he's cautioning, he's warning his son of the creature jabberwock, which hides in the forest and has sharp teeth and claws. He also warns him of a peculiar bird named as a jujube bird. And the jujube bird, it is again you can see a fictional bird which is very ferocious and desperate. And also of a furious and a fuming dangerous creature known as a bandus bat. The word frumious is given here which is again you can see a new word coined with the two words that is fuming and fury. Third stanza. He took his warple sword in hand. Long time the bang zone he fought. So rested he by the kingdom tree and stood a while in him. The brave boy sets out with his warple sword. And warple means dangerous, deadly, okay? And in search of the fearsome and monstrous enemy. So bang zone four. Bang zone means Again, it means very monstrous and deadly. He searched Jabberwock for some time and then for a while he rested under the Tum Tum tree 
okay and it is enveloped in thoughts tum tum tree again here it is a fictional tree which has been uh, you can say always coined or made by the poet coming to the fourth stanza and as an uffish thought he stood the jabber walk with eyes of flame came whiffling through the talji wood and burbled as it came so again what happens here the little boy as he stood under the tum tum tree just beginning to think suddenly he saw the jabber walk with fiery eyes blowing gusts of air come through the thick dense woods and the gusts of air seemed to produce a murmuring sound so burbled means murmuring one two one two and through and through the vorpal blade went snicker snack he left it dead and with it fell he went galloping back so without waiting for anything the brave boy took his deadly sword and with a snipping sound he beheaded the creature then taking jabberwock's head in his hand he galloped triumphantly towards his father galloping means galloping back in a triumphant manner and has thou slain the jabberwock come to my arms my beamish boy o oh, frabjous day kalwa kali he shortled in his joy the father was very much filled with you can see surprise wonder and you can see he was overjoyed to see that his brave son had slain the dangerous jabberwock he chuckled in joy and out of joy you can see the various sounds which are emitted that is kalu kali and he said that it was a very fabulous day for him as his son had done a brave deed just brilliant and the slithy toes did gyr and gimble in the wind all mimsy were the borogoes and the mom rats out again you see in the last stanza once again the poet has cited the same atmosphere and setting as mentioned in the first stanza and this shows that everything had been restored to normalcy coming to the literary devices of this poem let us see first of all we have here alliteration alliteration we get in this line so rested he by the tum tum tree where you find the word t understood it is the letter t which is pronounced imagery we can find here the jaws that bite the claws that catch came whiffling through the talji wood so here it is again you can see almost you can imagine you can create a picture symbolism you can see there are certain words in this poem which are used and symbolize something war the sword it symbolizes power jabberwock symbolizes evil jubjub bird symbolizes fear coming to the rhyme scheme if you see it is in each of the stanzas it is a b a b c d c d e f e f flicks and we will also find here the refrain that is the first stanza is repeated with the same words at the end of the poem in the last stanza and the most important thing to note is that the poem is a ballad a ballad is actually a type of a poem used for recitation or singing and generally it is a song of heroism and that is all what we find here the heroism the heroic deed done by the boy in this poem jabba oh this has this whole explanation will have helped you a great deal